traveling through uncharted spaces, be it the dark depths of the oceans or the vastness of space, is astonishing. But can the principles that drive submarines in the crushing depths of Earth's oceans also drive them among the stars? That's the question at the heart of our study today. By delving into the complex mechanics of submarines and spaceships, we'll unravel the similarities and differences that determine how they work. Would a submarine work like a spaceship? An exploration that will take us beyond the horizon, where the depths of our oceans reflect the infinity of space, inviting us to reflect on the limits of human innovation and the universal principles that guide our journey through the unknown. So both submarines and spacecraft share a number of common features in design, functionality and mission objectives, mainly due to the hostile, inaccessible and remote nature of their habitat. Both ships are examples of sophisticated engineering designed to sustain human life in environments that are inherently inhospitable to humans. And we begin with life support, systems responsible for oxygen supply, carbon dioxide removal, temperature regulation, humidity and sweep bars. Given the closed environment of both ships, maintaining a habitable atmosphere is critical to crew survival. The methods for obtaining oxygen in places so remote differ because of the unique challenges of working in water or space. You don't have to fill your cabin with phytoplankton to get oxygen, but you can use an oxygen generation system or OGs. Typically, OGSS function by electrolyzing water to separate it into hydrogen and oxygen. The resulting oxygen is then collected and supplied to the crew for breathing. This method provides a self-sustaining source of oxygen for long underwater missions. Submarines may also use compressed oxygen tanks as a backup or emergency oxygen source that can be used in the event of failure of other systems. As a last resort, Submarines may be equipped with emergency chemical oxygen generators. These devices produce oxygen through a chemical reaction, usually involving the decomposition of a solid chemical compound to produce oxygen gas. Like submarines, spacecraft often use the same electrolysis of water from supplies or wastewater to produce oxygen. The water is split into hydrogen and oxygen, which is then released into the spacecraft's atmosphere for breathing. Some spacecraft, such as Apollo, used solid fuel cells to generate electricity and simultaneously produce oxygen as a byproduct. In these fuel cells, hydrogen reacts with oxygen to produce electricity and water, and the excess oxygen is released into the cabin air. In terms of structural strength, submarines must withstand the high pressures of the deep sea environment, while spacecraft must withstand the internal pressures necessary to sustain human life in the vacuum of space. Therefore, both use strong, durable materials and engineering structures that can withstand such pressure differentials. Some modern submarines use titanium alloys in critical areas because of their superior strength to weight ratio and exceptional corrosion resistance. Aluminium alloys can be used in non-structural components and for buoyancy tanks because of their lightness and saltwater resistance. As in submarines, spacecraft can also use titanium alloys for individual components, especially in areas where strength, corrosion resistance and weight are important. In addition, titanium's ability to withstand extreme temperature extremes makes it suitable for use in spacecraft thermal management systems. In addition to metals, modern composite materials, such as carbon fiber reinforced polymers, are used in spacecraft for individual structural elements. These materials offer a high strength to weight ratio as well as thermal stability. But there are also differences. Submarines primarily require materials that can withstand the high pressures associated with deep sea operations. In contrast, spacecraft must withstand the extreme temperature differences in space, as well as the dynamic stresses of launch and spacewalking. Submarines often consider the magnetic signature of metals because of its effect on stealth. Therefore, the selection of materials takes into account the reduction of magnetic detection. In contrast, this consideration is not yet as relevant in spacecraft design. As we know, navigation in the deep sea and space requires high accuracy. Both types of vessels use sophisticated navigation systems to determine their position and course. In addition, given the remote nature of their missions, they rely on advanced communications technology to maintain contact with command centers. Submarines often use inertial navigation systems, which track motion from a known starting point using gyroscopes and accelerometers. This system is very useful for submarines operating in deep water where GPS signals cannot penetrate. Like submarines, Spacecraft also use inertial navigation systems to determine their motion. Given the lack of atmospheric or oceanic drag in space, these systems can be highly accurate over long periods of time. Submarines can use GPS signals to update or calibrate their navigation systems, ensuring accuracy over long distances. These periodic updates help correct any drift that accumulates in the inertial navigation system. 
Interestingly, spacecraft in low Earth orbit can also sometimes use the global positioning system for precise positioning, similar to land users and submarines when they are near the surface. But there are differences, of course. Submarines use sonar for underwater navigation and object detection. Active sonar emits sound pulses pings that reflect off objects and then return to the submarine, determining distance and direction to obstacles or the seabed. Passive sonar listens for sounds emitted by other vessels or aggressive killer whales to help stealthy navigation. But for spacecraft, sonar is useless. With it, it will not fly far away, or will fly away only irretrievably. They have to orientate themselves by the stars and other celestial bodies. Star tracking systems on spacecraft are used to maintain orientation and navigation. This method is invaluable for deep space missions where Earth-based systems make it impossible to navigate. There are also ground stations that track spacecraft using radar and radio telescopes. These structures can calculate the position and velocity of a spacecraft by measuring the so-called Doppler shift of radio signals sent and received by the spacecraft. For communications, submarines use very low frequencies, especially for receiving messages when submerged at shallow depths. To transmit messages, submarines can install floating antennas near the surface, allowing them to use higher frequency bands while also remaining submerged. Underwater communication systems also include acoustic methods, which use sound waves to transmit information. This method is slow and has a limited range, suitable mainly for communication between submarines, nearby ships and aquatic humanoids. Spacecraft, on the other hand, use mostly radio waves to communicate with Earth. The vast distances involved require highly sensitive receivers and powerful transmitters, both on spacecraft and in ground stations. Space agencies maintain networks of large antenna arrays. These easy-to-manufacture wafers are especially needed to communicate with missions beyond Earth orbit. Spacecraft in lower orbit or on the surface of planets, particularly Mars, can use repeater satellites to communicate with Earth. Submarines and spacecraft operate in very different environments and therefore use different types of propulsion systems to meet their unique needs and missions. Cooling methods for these engines also vary depending on the specific type of engine and the requirements of the operating environment. Conventional submarines are equipped with diesel-electric propulsion systems. These systems consist of diesel engines, and it is these engines that drive the generators to charge the batteries, which in turn power the electric motors for propulsion. This setup allows submarines to move silently underwater using battery power without having to surface frequently to recharge. Nuclear submarines use nuclear reactors to generate steam that drives turbines connected to electrical generators. The generated electricity powers the propulsion motors or directly drives the propellers. Nuclear propulsion provides greater range and operational endurance than diesel-electric systems. Submarine propulsion systems, especially those with internal combustion components such as diesel engines or generators, often use direct seawater cooling. The seawater is circulated through heat exchangers, absorbing the heat generated by the engine components and then discharged back into the sea. This cooling method is effective in dissipating excess heat and maintaining optimum engine temperature. Great technology that won't even get us to the moon. That's why most spacecraft use chemical propulsion systems like liquid rocket engines. These engines burn liquid or solid propellants to create thrust for orbital maneuvers or course correction. Some spacecraft use a combination of liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen as propellants for high-performance engines. Ion or Hall effect propulsion engines are used on some spacecraft for propulsion especially for long-duration mission missions requiring low thrust but high efficiency. These electric propulsion systems ionize fuel gases and accelerate the resulting ions to create thrust. In general, for both submarines and spacecraft, engine efficiency and cooling efficiency are prioritized to ensure optimal performance and mission success. But as we have seen here, different propulsion technologies and cooling methods are used to meet their operational requirements. Of course, crews of both submarines and spacecraft have to face long periods of isolation and confinement. The psychological impact of long missions is a problem in both realms, requiring careful selection and training of crew members. Initially, by the way, astronauts wanted to be selected specifically from submariners because they already had experience in extreme conditions and confined spaces, which was similar to the conditions of spaceflight. In addition, submariners are already accustomed to working in a team and to fulfill complex tasks in conditions of limited time and space. To summarize our research into the question of whether a submarine can perform the role of a spaceship, we can say that these marvels of engineering are not interchangeable. It is amazing, but the submarine, Lord of the Ocean Depths, and the spaceship, Traveler of the Void of the Universe, are wonderfully adapted to their unique conditions.
Differences in operational areas from the density of water to the emptiness of space dictate vast differences in design, propulsion, and life support systems. The pressures underwater contrast sharply with the vacuum of space, leading to fundamentally different challenges in structural integrity and environmental control critical to human survival. Thus, while the idea of a vessel capable of traveling both the depths of the ocean and into space is exciting, the practicalities of engineering, physics and safety make it a science fiction concept. Nevertheless, our journey into the unknown, whether beneath the waves or among the stars, continues to push the boundaries of technology and ingenuity.